Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. Kid, there's a wheat harvest happening somewhere in the world every month of the year. But there's a lot of variation that comes with this wheat crop globally when you look at it. Absolutely. If we look at some of the microclimates that wheat's grown, if we take Africa and other parts uh, near the equator, you can see we've got about 15 bushels to the acre average in some of these markets, up to about 155 bushel to the acre. So very different, diverse growing regions. So when we, when we look at this chart and we see uh, 95, uh, so what's the units there? That's tons This is metric, hectare? Yeah, million tons, yep. Okay, so when we look at North America, we see 95. When we look at Europe, we see 189. Why such a gap? Well, it's interesting. This question actually just came up in the last presentation. And it's very intensive here, coupled with the fact that uh, uh, Europe is very similar to the Pacific Northwest. A lot of rain, their climate is very similar, so they have favorable conditions to raise a nice crop. But that coupled with the fact that there's a lot of investment on seed treatments in those markets, a lot of investment on inputs, crop protection products. A good example, in Europe they'll spray for rust five or six times at the growing season. You get into more drier climates in the central part of the U.S., they may spray for rust more than once and they don't really want to spray for rust. So is it unrealistic to think that we could that we could actually close that gap based on the environmental conditions we have in North America? No, I don't think so. One of the things that we're looking at it through hybridization of wheat is, is that yield stability. And I think that is, we will see those benefits in those drier climates. So as opposed to having yield swings in that drier climate from 15 bushels to the acre to 30, we'll have a more consistent product of about, or a more consistent yield in that 20 bushel range. 